TikTok's getting banned from America. Steam's changing how they're refunding your video games. And, oh, we're getting benchmarks of what I think is AMD's hottest new product. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Thursday, April 25th, 2024. And as many of you pointed out in the comments yesterday, uh, this numerical palindrome of a week here in the US and how we date things, I know, uh, is going on for 10 days straight. So fantastic. I didn't notice that, that it started earlier, but it's good stuff. And for everybody who's complaining about how I date things like an American, he's married. That's a good point. Additionally, I lived in South Africa and I still did things this way. So I just bring in that everywhere. And that's what America's saying. We don't want TikTok. Get rid of it. Get rid of it like Brett uses these dates. TikTok has officially been signed out of the US with Joe Biden signing the law that was passed by the House of Representatives over the weekend. And then the Senate yesterday, making it so that either ByteDance, who is the parent company of TikTok, has to sell it off to an American company or face being banned by the US on data servers as well as from app stores. TikTok responding saying that this is unconstitutional. They're gonna challenge it in court. We'll see how this drags on and moves forward forward, but this is more clearly definitive than it was previously because it was attached to a financial aid bill for other things that were happening in uh, our global economic policy and military policy. So it got attached to that. And that means that the US is now looking at a future where TikTok is gone. Can you believe that, Kyler? No! He's lying on the ground right now wearing a MetaQuest 3. I wish I, I wish you could see it, but you're not gonna be able to. But that's not the only thing the US is looking to ban. There's reports coming out that the US government is looking into potentially making it so that Risk V can't actually be shipped to China, despite the fact that this is being held in a Swiss trust so that it has neutrality. The US Department of Commerce is investigating the risks of China getting access to Risk V and building all of their stuff on that. It's not enough to make it so that Nvidia can't chip out their fastest GPUs to them for this AI war that's going on. They also cannot get risk five. A lot of moves happening in the US foreign policy when it comes to the tech sector. I think opining on this is uh, probably not the best situation for many of us because this can just obviously very easily degrade into a wild cesspool of contempt and disregard for one another. We'll wait and see. Is, is TikTok gonna have some effective legal arguments that will take place in the court or will this actually be a permanent thing and ByteDance has to sell it off to Bobby Kotick because that's what every Everybody's saying they want, they want the ex-head of Blizzard to be the one who owns TikTok. Kyler's saying it right now. And Google's been saying that they're gonna get rid of cookies, all right? They, they've been saying that for years. And despite the fact that other browsers like Safari and Firefox have gotten rid of these trackers in 2020, Google has still kept them around, pushing back the date on which they get rid of them by a year, every year. So it was 2022. No, it was 2021 before that, then it was 2023, and now it's 2024. And guess what? It's it's not until next year, they're saying, that they're not gonna get rid of cookies. But however, just like in 1776, the source of this problem seems to be the British. So like that, that was a political thing that I'm willing to do. Uh, uh, War of 1812 could have gone there as well. Because according to the UK's CMA laws, these new trackers that are gonna be replacing cookies for Google Chrome will have to be effectively evaluated and that expects to be completed sometime this summer, roughly around June, making it so that Google's not easily able to replace it at the current moment, thanks again to the UK changing how they're doing things on their approval side. And Microsoft changing how they don't care if you approve of ads, because they're just gonna serve them to you. Windows 11 now officially rolling out with ads for everybody. This was something we talked about in a short, I think last week, that they were testing this feature out of bringing ads in the start menu to Windows 11, and now it is effectively for all all Windows 11 users. This was a feature that was in Windows 10 that was not in Windows 11 for the first almost two and a half years. And now it is here for you to get advertised to. You can turn it off in the settings in case you want to. Thankfully, Microsoft does make it simple to do that at the current moment. Who knows if they'll change that, potentially hide it behind you having to activate Windows or make it more difficult overall to access. We'll have to see, but more ads to your eyeballs. And Tesla wants more full self-driving to your vehicles because in the earnings report, 
report yesterday that Tesla had, they talked about how another automaker is interested in licensing full self-driving. They did not disclose who, and they did not say anything else. Even though in 2021, Elon Musk also said that another auto manufacturer was interested in this. And also, way back when, he said that he had funding secured to take Tesla private. This man does not make things up ever when it comes to his companies. It's always truthful, and it's never to save his bacon or save how the company is being viewed in the public size. Not because they are down tremendously in terms of profit and revenue and are not selling as many vehicles as they once were and are taking a large loss on operating income when it comes to certain new vehicles that they decided to publish. None of that impacts any of this. But now let's toss it over to my favorite South African deals man. Yo, welcome back to EFT Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Hope you guys are doing well and hey, deals. Starting off today, we have this deep cool AK620 WH CPU air cooler available in white for only $54.99 with the include promo code and hey, I have one of these. So if you if you guys want to be all matchy matchy, we can be we can be cool together. I'd like that. But then next up, we have this Corsair K70 Pro Mini wireless 60% mechanical keyboard with speed switches back again, but this time for only $63.99, making it $116 off on clearance. And then lastly is a favorite with the HyperX Cloud 2 wireless gaming headset for only $75.99. $0.99, making it $74 off. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, Steam is going to stop giving you such a good deal when it comes to being able to refund your video games. There's been a no questions asked policy of you being able to play for two hours. And if you go over that limit, you can't get a no questions asked refund. But if it's under that limit, you just submit it and they'll give you your money back. They're getting rid of that for only early access and advanced access access games, which boggles my mind that they were allowing this in the first place because the difference was when an early access game went full access that made it so that it kind of reset and even though you played it throughout early access you had less than two hours in the new release so you could ask for a refund this apparently was something that people were doing and steam is now making it so that you can't abuse that anymore which i don't really have a problem with and something else that i don't have a problem with is asus making the rg ally slightly better because they announced that in their drivers they're now going to support amd's fluid motion frames this generative frame setup will allow you to get better frame rate on this handheld device, which is something that I don't think other handhelds have. The Legion Go definitely does not have it. I don't believe that the Steam Deck would even support it based on uh, the hardware that's inside of it. It may, it might be able to happen at some point, but it's currently not there. This makes the ROG Ally very compelling, bringing fluid motion frames to this, especially since uh, you could just get faster FPS, which makes your games better. I heard that. I heard that. Hey. Listen, it's not in every video game. It makes it really tricky to have a general broad state. It, it's just a good feature to have, but it wasn't available before. And that's how AMD feels about their Epic CPUs. It's a good thing, but not enough people have access to it. So they're gonna be allegedly releasing an Epic CPU to an AM5 motherboard. Yes, that's right. The same form factor that you're getting for your Ryzen 7800X 3D is going to be an Epic chip. It's being called Epic 4004, and it can have up to 16 Zen 4 cores. It can be X3D compatible as well, and likely will benefit from all the things that Epic has, such as ECC memory, and you'll just have to find a motherboard that's compatible with all of that. Maybe sometime later this year, we'll get all of this is this going to affect you as a gamer not very likely but it's a it's a good little update that they're bringing out but we're also getting more details that the next generation chips from amd are going to be called ryzen 9000 gigabyte including that in a patch update saying that they now support ryzen 9000 series cpus on their am5 motherboards with the latest bios updates so it's pretty much said and done it's ryzen 9000 but what i'm looking forward to the most with ryzen 9000 or the next gen chips is the strix halo strix point big old APUs that AMD is coming out with, and there's more benchmarks coming out for these bad boys. The Strix Point Halo 55 watt APU being spotted, as well as the 28 watt chip being discovered in some benchmarks. There are a couple of differences. The Strix Point APU is supposed to have 12 CPU cores and 16 GPU cores, and then the Halo one's supposed to have 16 CPU cores with 40 GPU cores. And man, that's going to be such a good performer when it finally launches. And there's both CPU benchmarks, which are not really that much to write home about especially because it only runs at something like 1.4 gigahertz and it loses out to the current gen 7940 hs but it does show that they're getting tested they should be coming out to the market sometime soon potentially we might get a computex unveiling but then additionally there are gpu 
benchmarks that are happening for the 16 GPU core version of the Strix Point with its Gravity Mark benchmark numbers, putting it somewhere in the region of a 1050 Ti Max Q mobile chip, which is slower than it's supposed to be. It's really supposed to come in at the 1650 mark, but these are early samples. This is not retail product, likely will be faster when it finally comes out, but it is exciting to see that it is hitting the benchmarking rounds and I can't wait for us to get more details on this as it's being brought to life. And what I'm gonna bring to life is your words in the form of comment response over on Floatplane. We got Dappin Age saying the whole deal with EK has been interesting to see it unfold. I just hope everyone gets paid. I agree, that would be a great resolution to all of this. Then Andre the Hunter saying, um, actually Mac OS is built on Unix, not Linux. I know. I specifically said, let's see how you comment nerds respond to that one. I don't think that's verbatim, but it was bait. It was bait for me to say that Mac OS is based on Linux. I know it's based on FreeBSD and Unix and all of that. It doesn't matter. It's Linux. It's Linux all the way down, baby. And then NRP is saying, data and new customers attraction sounds like the emails I get and a few extra bonuses, similar to like bonuses on AliExpress, but looks like one of those things is that they have a benefit of a repeat customer, not just that I need a hard drive, so I'll buy it on Newegg. So I'm gonna talk about this because there's a few other comments uh, that are on YouTube with regards to like the loyalty system. They already have a loyalty point system called egg points that incentivize you to not check out as a guest. This is like in addition to and separate from that, which makes it weird because they're, it's not quite a loyalty program. You don't get rewarded for making more purchases. It is a loyalty program in that you are just a better tier of customer. You get better deals, but you don't get access to points or reimbursement somehow where it's like uh, flight miles or anything like that. It's simply, hey, you get better customer support, better shipping, better prices, better pizza, better ingredients. So I, I'm, I'm still very confused about it and even reading a lot of ideas about what this could mean for customers. It doesn't seem like it's a very consumer focused practice by Newegg here. But in case you wanna check us out on Floatplane, we do have one of this weekend's videos live right now where I checked out the RTX 4060 and compared it to the RX 7600 at its current price point. You can watch that over on Floatplane right now or it'll be coming to YouTube later this weekend. And we got Derek Johnson saying, Newegg is doing the same thing grocery stores do with the membership discount card, jack up the price on all items, and then the card saves you money. It does kind of feel like that, like they will have two tiers of customers, the regular plebs who pay the elevated MSRP, and then anybody who signs up, which again, what benefit is Newegg getting out of people signing up besides, I, I guess maybe it's that it's gonna increase their profit margins because they're gonna charge more money to the people who aren't signed up. That's a, that's a possibility, I guess. Then pros can lick saying, if RX the 8000 series becomes another price to performance banger, I'm going for it. I, I, I think a lot of people are excited. If that happens, I am skeptical based on AMD's moves as of late, specifically in the GPU department, but I hold out hope for that. And Roki saying, most of us don't need another $2,000 GPU. That's fine, but to get 18 gigabits per second memory on a graphics card right now, it's like a mid-range GPU. It's slower than what AMD already has that isn't a $2,000 GPU. It's kind of the idea. The Mr. Baskin saying, Newegg went from college textbook villain to industry darlings. That 180 has never been explained to me. I don't know that Newegg was ever really a super villain, like in terms of how they were viewed by the mass consumers. Really the, the problem was there was a couple of bad customer service instances. They had a couple of poor responses from their leadership and management. And as far as I gather, none of those people still work at Newegg. There's been turnover. Um, there's new people that are, are working there, but it's always kind of still been, hey, this is where you go to get electronics. Even during all of the stuff that we were going through with UFD Tech, I never considered that I was gonna boycott Newegg because of all of that. It, it was just, they had bad management. Um, and whether or not that's changed, it's unclear, but I can tell you the people that we were working with at the company when we had our problems are no longer there. And the reason we've been doing ad spots with them lately is because they're going through a third party company that we trust that I know there is going to pay us because we've already worked with that third party company for so many other things. The Newegg Trust from our side as a uh, company that's going to promote them has changed in our dynamic, but also like, I, I don't think 
Newegg was ever like a textbook villain. They were always just like, could you do better? Because if you don't, we have to buy from Amazon. And from what I gather, they are kind of doing better. I would not say they're industry darlings. I, I still think that there's a healthy amount of skepticism towards Newegg, but uh, that, that might just be my perspective on it. Then James saying, I was actually curious about whether Reese might be coming back this year. Having you, Kyle, and Reese together is absolutely delightful, though I understand it's probably tough. That's a lot of tra travel time and potential visa restrictions to deal with. I don't know if he's coming back. That man's a mystery to me. I, ask Reese about it in the comments. Ask Reese, hey, you coming back to America? We'll see if he ever answers you. See if he, we can get him to say something about it in the deals. And then we got mine, son, wound saying, I haven't watched any of the LTT channels in a few years, but it's good to see even though none of the people are the same, the jaunty banter still survives. Are you talking about us? We got bought out. Remember? No. It was about two years ago. 